So we want to, we want to study with, find the derivatives of the inverse hyperbolic functions. Yeah. So there are two ways in which you can do that. One is you can write the hyperbolic function, the inverse hyperbolic function as a log function, as we did in the previous video. Um, or you can use um, implicit differentiation to find the derivatives of the inverse hyperbolic function. So there are many two approaches. So for instance, giving uh, given y is sine inverse x, okay, how do you find the derivative of what is dy dx is equal to 1? How do you find that? So make it 1 if you want. This is one way you can do it. You can write um, the sine inverse of x as ln x plus the square root of x squared plus 1. As we found in the previous, uh, in the previous case, so you can write like this. And since we know how to differentiate the ln function, then it becomes relatively really easy. So from here, dy dx will be equal to I have 1 over what is in here, the mean and the ln square root of x squared plus 1. Multiply by the derivative of what is in here. Okay, how do you find the derivative of that? Well, this is one. The derivative of this is one half. In x squared plus one brings the power negative one half. The derivative of what is in here is two x. Okay, so we have this. So which implies that dy dx is equal to, I still have this guy, 1 over x plus the square root of x squared plus 1. Note that the 2's cancel out, and this is 1 plus, this becomes x, all over the square root of x squared plus 1. Okay? I can simplify this. So I can rewrite this as dy dx to be equal to 1 over x plus the square root of x squared plus 1. This time thus. So the top can actually be written as x plus the square root of x squared plus 1 divided by the square root of x squared plus 1. Note that the numerator here and the denominator here cancel out at the same time. So this guy cancels this, therefore y dx is equal to 1 over x square root of x squared plus 1. So the derivative of the hyperbolic, the inverse hyperbolic sine function is given by 1 over x square root of x squared plus 1. That is one way you can do that, method 1. Now, there's a second one which I think is really is shorter. Okay, so given this, the second approach to do this. Given that y is equal to sine inverse of x, this of course implies that sine y is equal to x. Then just differentiate both sides. Okay? We know the derivative of sine sin, or this um, hyperbolic sine that will give us a harsh y. Then I have to multiply by the derivative of this dy dx. Using implicit differentiation, the derivative of this is just 1. This implies that dy dx is equal to 1 all over cos y. But recall, remember that we have this identity, we have this hyperbolic identity that cos square x minus if you like y we need to use y because of this sine square y is equal to one which implies that cosh actually y is equal to the square root of one plus sine square y but note that sine is actually x okay therefore cosh 
y is actually the square root of 1 plus x squared. Okay, plus sign squared is equal to x here. So if I go back here, you know, I call this one. So equation one implies that dy x is equal to 1 over cosh, which is the square root of 1 plus x squared plus x squared plus 1. And then we are done. That is basically these two ways to approach this you can use to find um, the derivative of the inverse hyperbolic functions. That brings us to the end of hyperbolic functions. Alright, I have some exercises which you can try. Yes, so here are a few exercises that you can, you can try for yourself. Find the derivatives of this. Show. Sure. Show that a d dx of cosh inverse of x is equal to 1 over the square root of x squared minus 1 for x greater than 1. B show that d dx of tanh inverse of x is equal to 1 over 1 minus x squared. Okay, this holds for x. One and then C so show that dx of cot inverse of x is one over one minus x squared and this is for x greater than one. So try these um, three exercises. Okay, that's the end of the